Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live with my wife, Yana Benun, and we have a very special guest, and I'm going to let Yana re, uh, in, introduce for you. And, uh, of course, uh, today you get to see our shining faces in still form. And that's only because uh, there's some people in higher places that, that just didn't want this to be in a video format. I wonder why. I guess you're not watching Israeli News Live. You're listening to Israeli News Live. Yeah, i got to learn the new uh, verbiage, don't I? I guess so, Stephen. Well, welcome all of you. And welcome, Sophia. Sophia Smallstorm. She's a dedicated researcher, ladies and gentlemen. Sophia is not satisfied until she knows it all to the greatest detail. And I am so happy that she's willing to share some of her knowledge with us. And I brought her here today because I listened to some of her presentation on chemtrails, on AI, on Morgellons, transhumanism, on vaccines. And let me throw some more terms at you like transbiology or homo evolutis. So, well, all I can say, I am here to learn tonight and not to speak. So, welcome, Sophia. You are very nice, and it's not at all that I know everything. I just, if I, see, here's how I operate, Yana and Steve, and thank you very, very much for inviting me. It's very nice to be talking to you and to know you. Um, if I don't understand something, even if it's a term in something I'm reading, I will look it up, mm -hmm. and I will get to the point where I do understand what the definition is and how it fits into the context of what, I'm trying to learn. So the quick way to paraphrase that is I answer my own questions. And that's how I deliver information. Because if I don't understand something, why should I parrot it? Because nobody else is probably going to understand it either. Or at least a large percentage of people are going to probably have the same question. Well, you are my kind of woman, Sophia, because, you know, I am similar to you. This is maybe why you captured my attention like this because um, you really go into a great detail and anybody who will listen to your lectures or interviews that you have done can certainly agree with me and uh, I really appreciate you coming on and most of the things that you talked about I never got to myself even though I am a biologist you know I was teaching biology at the high school level I'm a former nurse midwife and some things that I heard you speak on, especially vaccines, because I'm an activist against vaccines. I had my own uh, story about with my son who nearly died from MMR vaccine. So um, before that event, I was uh, pro-vaccine, I should say. I was brainwashed in, in a school, nursing school. Of course, they brainwash us. And after that event, when I started researching and I found out what vaccines are, and then I went deeper and found out even more sinister agenda, okay? So then I heard you speak on several things, transhumanism, AI, Morgellons, uh, vaccines, Henrietta Lacks. You brought me to this name, Henrietta Lacks. I mean, I so appreciate all of your research and knowledge, and I want to treat our listeners and you can certainly bless us. So, you know, I, I today I kind of wanted to talk about 5G. We have been doing our um, conferences all over the United States, and we've been talking on several things, no hide laws and all kinds of stuff like that, but uh, we did m bring up some lectures about 5G, and I would like you to go into it. Like, for example, what is 5G? Okay, what kind of implication it has? What's behind this agenda? Where did it all originate? Why is this happening? And finally, are there any solutions? Can you kind of talk to us about that? Well, you just gave me the whole horizon, and I guess I have to pick the place where to start. But, <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to say this, that once upon a time we lived on the land, and we eked out very simple existences, and we supported one another in the small communities we lived in with help. Because if your neighbor needed some physical help, you could help them. And we traded. 
And man is a creature that constantly wants to improve, to find speedier solutions, to find efficiency. And so we were inventive, and we invented things. And we invented things like the wheel and the steam engine, I'm jumping, you know, eons, uh, electricity. And with every invention, we created a shortcut. We created a quicker path to something. And we didn't really think about what the dangers might be to us from these paths. So I started looking back at all of this a couple of weeks ago, and I decided that, yes, the advent of certain things into our domestic lives created a very big, um, you could say it, a confluence of, of stress sores. For instance, when we became electrified industrially, we became more productive. Industries started to use chemicals. So the industrial age brought us the chemical age, brought us the age of electricity, because that's what it was actually riding the back of. We also then had a short uh, interlude love affair with the radiation age. This was ionizing radiation. And then all of that together brought us into more advanced uses of the chemical age. For instance, our medical treatments um, that Big Pharma shoves at us, that's a form of the chemical age. We are treating disease, failures of biology with chemicals. And now we're moving into radiation medicine, where we use radiation diagnostics to figure out what's wrong with us, and then we're going to be using, we already are, radiation therapies, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talk about CT. How many times, right, doctor wants you to get a CT scan? Very dangerous, right? And then uh, talk about cancer therapies. They're, they're treating cancer with radiation. Right. And they're going to move into gene therapies. It, I think the official term is IGT, immunoprophylaxis by gene transfer, meaning they're going to transfer or genetically modify your biology so that you will not get this disease or that disease that your family lineage predisposes you to. Now, that's what they will claim, but the fact is it probably won't work, and then they'll just, just the way chemical, chemical applications to disease conditions don't work, they just create more problems. And they'll tell us, oh, you're just one of the people that it didn't work for. We're so sorry we tried. And they'll be immune to any kind of legal action. So when you ask me what is 5G, 5G is an offshoot or it's an outgrowth of 4G and 3G. And the G stands for generation. And I just want to throw in here that a lot of people have routers that say 2.4G and 5G. The G on your router does not mean 5G. It means 5 gigahertz. Okay. So, yeah. That so, was, that, okay. that, thanks for saying that because we have that here in our house, 5G, and we were all scared that we have a 5G, real 5G, yet over here in Orlando, Florida, we don't have a knowledge that it rolled out yet, the millimeter wave, actual millimeter wave, you know. So, but good to know. Thank you. Yeah, and you can actually call your provider and ask them to shut that transmission off because it is useless. It's quicker. It's 5 billion hertz. Gigahertz means billion hertz, whereas your regular Wi-Fi is 2.4 billion hertz, 2.4 gigahertz. But there is no need for you to be receiving 5 billion hertz when you have nothing in your house that even uses it. That's right. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. So the other 5G is fifth generation. And this is about, as I understand it, this is the speediest way to deliver feedback to the powers that be sitting in their, I'm just going to call it, you know, theoretical ivory towers where they want to surveil us and they want to find out every detail of our lives. So the 3G, 4G, all of the methods of transmission that have been used for data have been have involved copper wires. Even though there's a wireless part of it at the end, mm -hmm. the 
infrastructure involves copper wiring, as I understand it. Now, I had the occasion to bump into a, a technician who was a lineman for AT and T a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And I asked him, I said, "Are they going to discontinue landlines?" And he said, "Oh no." And I meant telephone landlines. He said, "No, no, no, they're not because they're laying right now. They're laying in the ground across the country, tremendous amounts of fiber optics." Hmm. He said, "Oh," and I knew that he really didn't know the answer to my question, but it was good for me to have that information because I since learned that. 5G is transmitted through fiber optic cables using light, light technology. And since learning that, I found out that when you transmit signal through metal, you have a tremendous amount of of distortion. There's a lot of interference, noise, harmonics. But when you transmit using light as the medium, it's Clean. There is no distortion, and it's very, very fast. So then, it was the author Patrick Wood who has written the book Technocracy Rising. He's very well known. I had an occasion to talk to him. It was my privilege. He told me that the reason they're implementing 5G is because they want instant feedback about everything we're doing. They don't want to wait for the errors and the noise and the crud. That 4G and 3G bring back to them, and the slowness of 4G and 3G. They want to sit and watch in real time. They want Patrick said real time modeling of the world that is around us and them. Wow! So you're telling me because they are rolling this out this year. I know that some states like Texas. Okay, is rolling it out in some major cities. It's being they they've been trying this technology already in Czech Republic. That's like a first guinea pig nation where they've been trying it on population. And you, so you're basically telling me that the main reason is surveillance of the citizens. It's the speed of the information coming to them. Hmm. That's right. Well, what kind of implication is this going to have on health? Do you have any information on that? Well, I will. I'd like to throw in a little segue, a little sideshow comment.、Um, I had a friend. I have a friend who has some rental properties, and the internet provider sent her a notice that she had to respond to, and the question was. At this particular address, do you want 4G or do you want 5G? And in parentheses after 5G, it said faster. So she checked 5G because it's faster.、Huh. Now I told her, I said, you know what? I said you just screwed yourself. Yes. Because now you asked for it. Wow. So you cannot hold them liable for any problems that you're going to have. Or your tenants are going to have at this location because you asked for it. Wow! So that is where they're going to cover their their butts when it comes to health. And I suspect. Okay, so there is this stuff going around, Yana and Steve, that I'm a little concerned about, and people are making videos about it. And I think Yana, you confirmed that somebody had written to you recently about this that there is a safe form of five G. And that we are being given 5G that's militarized,、yes. and therefore it's not the safe kind, quote unquote. Right? You know, I have brought this information out、uh, on in my slides on conferences, and I have said to people that even our current president, Donald Trump, has approved, and he's asking for this technology. To be rolled out as quickly as possible, he's even speaking of a 6G, believe or not. And I have learned that this is part of trade wars with China. Like all these countries are, you know, fighting who is going to be first in the five G rolling out. And so somebody wrote this message to me, and they said, "Well, 
uh, Mr. Trump is innocent because what he's giving us is a safe 5G. The 5G that he approved is not dangerous to health. And I have first time heard such a thing. I never knew that a safe 5G even exists. So can you talk more about this? All right, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think it's possible to, to have safe vaccines? No, absolutely no. There is no such thing like safe Nor, vaccines. Yeah, we, we won't even go there. <laughs> but anyway, no. That's right. Okay, do you think it's possible to be a little bit pregnant? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that is possible. Just a little bit, not too much. <laughs> no, absolutely not. You're pregnant or not. <laughs> Okay, so the third question is, knowing what we know about the electromagnetic wave spectrum, most of which is blank in the natural world, meaning those waves didn't exist until man came in and made them, do you think it's safe? It's possible to have a safe 5G? Absolutely not. You know, Sophia, a lot of people have put their belief in, in Trump, they think he's a savior of the United States and savior of, of the mankind almost. And they're making all kinds of excuses. And there is no such thing as fa safe 5G. In fact, it's it's a weapon, right? Am I it's a weapon that is used in military. It is a weapon. We are being weaponized. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me see here. What try, happened? try it now. Well, hang on. For some reason, yeah, they just shut it off. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I know what's happening. You know what it is, Sophia? The, the smartphone technology? Are you able to hear us? No, it still says the speaker. Okay, but it says the speaker's off one second. Uh, what they're doing is you can, it should work now. The technology nowadays with these smartphones is as you talk, it decides to do its own thing. Can you hear us? Mm, well, well, you know, I, I can hear. I wonder because uh, Steve has the, is this the latest? Unfortunately. Yeah, he because... has the latest iPhone. And, you know, it does the strangest thing, Sophia. And, you know, I know we are kind of going off the subject. But one time when Steve was in Washington, my daughter was calling him crying about certain thing. And our iPhone has called 911 without me dialing it. They dialed 911. Don't keep saying it because it will do it again. Yeah. So it was it, it was the detected stress in her voice cuz she was upset and so that's what it did. Yeah. It's really strange. Really strange stuff. But anyway, let's let's go back to uh 5G. I don't know where we ended, but anyway, I was talking about 5G being a weapon. You were talking about Trump and that's when they cut you off and put a big plastic bag over you. That's right. <laughs> Can't speak against him. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I want to just say this. I want to give a little visual. So imagine the wave spectrum. There's different kinds of waves, but there's an electromagnetic wave spectrum. You can look it up online. And the natural electromagnetic field of the Earth is, it ranges between zero oscillations per second and 40, four zero. And most of it sticks to 7 to 12 cycles per second. That means the waves, they're very long, languid waves. They all travel at the same speed. All waves travel at the speed of light. Light travels at the speed of all electromagnetic waves. Okay? But the interval between each crest of the wave, when you're looking at a 7 hertz wave, and that's what your brain is. Your brain likes 7 hertz. When it's all amped up, it likes 12 hertz, and it doesn't like anything really beyond that. Equatorial thunderstorms will throw 40 hertz into our environment, but that's not very often. So even when we had 50 hertz electricity come in and 60 hertz, W. Ross 80 of Loma Linda University, he was a professor there at medical school, 
in the 70s said, what's this going to do to us? I mean, we like 40 hertz. That's all we're acclimated to. And that's extreme for us. So what is 50 and 60 going to do to us? He asked this in the 70s. And now we have data being transmitted on the radio frequency microwave spectrum, which is blank in nature. But mankind has figured how to use something called transduction, using crystals, throwing voltage at crystals, making them shudder and shake and deform, and then they produce a frequency and the vice versa effect works as well. You throw a frequency or a mechanical force or a pressure on a crystal and it will release a voltage. So this is how all amplification and all these other technologies today work. They work on the concept of transduction. You can look it up. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we were acclimated to up to 40 hertz. We understood pressure waves called sound. We had an auditory range that we could accept and translate to help us live. We were acclimated to another electromagnetic wave um, band called visible light because we need that. We need that for our biology. We need that to navigate the world. And beyond that, we were deaf and blind. We just didn't didn't hear anything. There's a certain kind of infrasound that we feel. We don't hear it. Ultrasound, we feel it and we kind of hear it. But for instance, tell me how you feel when you hear a motorcycle roaring by, a helicopter. You hear uh, thunder. You hear um, a truck, a heavy truck or a train. Most people say they don't like those sounds. They get a little bit antsy. You're right. But, and I right. don't. And I hate motorcycle sound. Makes me very angry, kind of nervous, you know. Right. Because we are hardwired to be prepared. When we hear, what you're really hearing and responding to is the infrasound. That means the range of wavelengths below what you can hear. The hearing part is bad enough, but you're feeling the infrasound. And you're hardwired to get ready for an avalanche, a tidal wave, an elephant stampede. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So we don't like heavy-duty infrasound. It tells us something bad is going to happen. That's right. And we don't like ultra-ultrasound either. Mm -hmm. That we don't even... It's destructive to the crystals in our bodies. And we're not around it because the animals that use ultrasound are living in the depths of the ocean. And so that brings me to the last part of my little thesis here, which is that there are elements of the Earth that throw out wavelengths that are extremely fast. Electromagnetic waves. These are the you know uranium, strontium, thorium, radium, all the radioactive elements. And they're not good for us because those speeds, those wavelengths will actually burn our tissues and cause terrible, terrible results. But where are those elements, I ask you? They are buried deep in rocks where biology doesn't go. That's right. That's why 5G, well, even 4G, 3G, 2G, but 5G, millimeter wave, you know, radiation, is against our biology. It's against animals. It's against insects, you know. Uh, I was bringing out the information how bees are already dying and how they're going to be dying en masse from the 5G. And wherever they're trying this technology, either animals die, the insects die, the trees are affected. So it is definitely contraindicated to everything created and to our own human biology. You know, Sophia, are you there? I am. I ran across the room to get something because I okay. have to. I have to support what I'm going to say. Steve, you were going to say something. Yeah, I was thinking because going back to when you were talking about the sounds and how they affect the uh, the human body, it goes back to Dr. Emoto and his research just on words alone. Let and of course he also did ex scientific experiments with uh, wave frequencies, etc and how that affects the water in our body, the crystals in the water itself, 
uh, not to mention the crystals in the water that he was actually, you know, filming uh, to show those changes. So yes, it's interesting to note the uh, the technology of 5G and how that's, uh, like you mentioned, going through the uh, crystals and how that affects the human body. Right, and one of the things I'm learning now, because I want to tell people, I you think I know a lot, I really don't. I'm always learning something and it's added to the big, you know, giant ballast of stuff I have in my head that gets all mushed together and then I freak out because I can't remember things clearly. <laughs> but all, all of us are like this, Sophia, don't feel bad. <laughs> all right, well... What I am learning now is that there is a concert of stuff happening to us. And because of the concert of assaults that we are enduring that didn't exist on this earth before, to even two, three hundred years ago, they didn't have all this stuff. We are experiencing a synergy of toxins. And when you have all the toxins ganging up on you together, the net effect, even specifics, can be amplified because you've got one toxin in a way as a partner of another. And this actually occurs in biology, and certain researchers are studying it. But when you have 5G standing right next to chemical assaults, next to vaccines, next to GMOs, the poor living organisms are going to be hard-pressed to defend themselves against all of this in one ball of wax. That's what I was thinking, too. Do you think, Sophia, that they have prepared our bodies to be conductive, to, you know, like, they put in us these vaccines in our children and adults, you know, and animals too, quite frankly. But they put these heavy metals inside of our bodies, nanoparticles from chemtrails, right? And GMO foods. Do you think when all of this, that it is it is in our bodies, we are toxic right now. All of us are toxic, okay? Do you think that 5G is going to have effect on the, all of this? Well, it has to. There's no way that it can't. But you're right in that they are implanting us with their materials, their pseudobiology, and they are counting on, this is my opinion, the chaos eventually taking over. Because right now we're fighting the chaos, the intrusion that is coming into us on, in all different ways. They're coming in different kinds of, of um, mediums, you could say. Um, and we're eventually going to kind of cave into this. And then my fear is that the concert will take over. It will have its own order, and it will make that order in our biological chaos. And then that's when we will become a sub-part of ourselves. Our natural biology will be ruled and, and conducted by these outside forces, the amalgam, the aggregation of these outside influences. But do there's a big but there, so I'm just going to stop. Now, do you think Homo sapiens sapiens exist anymore? Well, again, I am not a researcher per se. I don't wear a white coat and I don't have a lab. So when you say, do you think this is my belief and opinion, I think they have put in us already some cross-domain materials. And by the definition and argument of Clifford Carnicom at the Carnicom Institute, there are things that are replicating within us that are not eukaryotic or prokaryotic by themselves and they are very hardy so we have some he calls it cdb cross domain bacteria but it's not a bacterium it's a cousin of a bacterium that has properties of the other life kingdoms so again this is his theory and i simply repeated it because it made sense to me but we 
again, we cannot just sit here and shiver in fear that we're being taken over, that this is invasion of the body snatchers. Theoretically, I think that's what the experiment is about. Mm-hmm. But we could still have our own our own resources. And those, I believe, are extremely creative, creative in the most profound sense of that word. You can call in the creator in the definition of what creative means. You can call in your own, your own um, generative powers because we are creative beings. We are not put here only to respond and react. We are put here to create from the part of us that is partnered with real creation. Sophia, let's go back to this 5G. Sounds extremely evil to me, what they're doing with millimeter wave. You know, that's also part of those scanners at the airports. I'm sure you know that. So what what do you know about these scanners? Do you think it's dangerous to go through them? I know that they started out as ionizing radiation and that Michael Chertoff was the one who really pushed for them. And his mother was an Elal stewardess. And his father or his grandfather was a rabbi. It was a rabbinical family. So there is a lot of rabbinical power in the American government, I would like to point out. Mm-hmm. And I believe that they changed the... Because there was some little bit of outcry They changed the ionizing radiation to uh, non-ionizing radiation in the scanners. Now, whether it's a 5G radiation today, I can't tell you. Because based on my research, uh, it is a millimeter wave, which is basically 5G. And yes, you go inside of them for a few seconds, right? So most people don't have immediate immediate reaction however a lot of people who fly often and who do go through this millimeter wave scanners report headaches and maybe eye problems you know so uh, based on what i know it is quite dangerous so this is why there's still an option option here in the united states to opt out or don't go through them but then of course you have to submit yourself to a uh, pad down, you know, <laughs> that can be quite uh, embarrassing sometimes, which has Shana, happened to me. Yeah. I just want to point out that today, if let's say you're going through a 5G scanner, let's just say you are, and then you get on a plane, and the plane has Wi Fi delivery. Right. And there are 200 people sitting in a metal box, and they're all twiddling on different kinds of devices. And if you look at the diagrams of the intensity of wireless radiation on those planes, and people are bathed in that for hours at a time. Right. And then what, when are they reporting the headaches? Uh, my guess is the headache is coming from that. It's not coming from one millisecond passing through a 5G scanner, if that's what the scanner is. So you cannot just dismiss what's going on in the plane for the duration of time that people are in these airplanes and say the danger to us is the scanner that they pass through for a couple of seconds. You know, some airplanes do have, definitely do have Wi-Fi, which I agree with you is extremely dangerous, but some don't, you know, some planes don't. But anyway, let's go back to what do you know of origins of 5G? Where was it born? Wh- whose idea was it? I know that we are in the age of radiation biology. And radiation biology began a long time ago. And I can't prove where 5G originated. I've heard that it originated in Israel. I do know that Chaim Weizmann was the first president of Israel. He was a biochemist. And it was at the Weizmann Institute in Rehovot, Israel, where they began to irradiate um, with ionizing radiation bacteria. They, it, it is claimed that they did this on canned food because they wanted to sterilize the food inside. But I think they had other 
ideas. And they produced a bacterium that was able to withstand radiation. In fact, it loved radiation. And this was called Deinococcus radiodurans, or for short, D period radiodurans, D-U-R-A-N-S. And the Deinococcus radiodurans bacterium has, it doesn't have a stranded DNA like we do. It has a toroid, meaning a circular DNA. And this DNA didn't break because of the strength of the circle. So toroidal DNA can withstand radiation according to this very early discovery. And it, I won't even say that it was they discovered Deinococcus radiodurans. They may have created it because these bacteria are very hardy and they can mutate very, very in a very agile way. And that is credited to the Weizmann Institute in Israel. Mm-hmm. And we have seen the Manhattan Project, which was pretty much the, um, it was birthed by approval by Franklin Roosevelt, the president of the United States at the time, but it was the brainchild of Leo Szilard, S-Z-I-L-A-R-D. He too was a scientist, a chemist, a very brilliant man. He grew up in Czechoslovakia. I believe his original, his real name was Spitz. I'm just, I'm not looking at my notes here. I'm just talking from memory. But Szilard befriended Einstein, and together they wrote heavy-duty letters to Roosevelt, and they asked him to begin this Manhattan Project. And they were really into, I mean, Szilard was an amazingly brilliant man, and he called for the electron microscope. He invented a lot. He worked with Enrico Fermi on a lot of different reactor-type things. Um, he was the, the guy of his age, Leo Szilard, S-Z-I-L-A-R-D. And um, again, so I think that the Manhattan Project was the beginning of the age of radiation, and we have seen it bring to us this wireless radiation as well, which is now the, it's the base, basis on which our world works. It's the communication um, network oh yeah you know it's 5g is supposed to lead us to well cloud computing right and then of course uh, the the self-driving cars uh the smart appliances you know you will be able to talk to your wash machine and the stuff like that so yeah (laughs) well again it's all about our consent do you consent to this? Is this what you want? If you are ignorant, you may say, I would love to talk to my washing machine. Right. I would love to have my household robot trundle my laundry basket to the washing machine, dump it in while I sit with my feet up and eat more Fritos because I love GMO chips, right? That's right, Sophia. But you know, they're not asking population for permission. They're going to roll it out and put it on every fifth light pole. The little black boxes that transmit those millimeter waves. So when you come out, you're going to get zipped. Let's say you are on a bicycle, bicycling, and then on every fifth light pole is a little black box that they're going to roll out, and you're getting zipped with all this radiation. You have never asked for it or consented to it. Of course, in your own house, you might refuse it, you might say no, but when you go outside, you know how children like to play outside. So it is a, of concern that it is something they're rolling out despite asking people for permission or if we even want it. Okay, I'm going to tell you something that's going to make you feel a lot better. And very recently, an electrical engineer confirmed this for me. And very few people know it. When you are mobile meaning moving around, when you're riding your bicycle past a 5G pole, you don't get zapped. Oh, that's good. So I didn't know have, that. So we don't have you're to take our eggs with us to cook them? <laughs> no, it won't work. So GMO eggs. Okay, so hold on. Picture, okay, don't get too excited. Just picture a sniper, uh, an army sniper. He's lying there and he's got a target and he has to shoot it dead. But he can't because the target is moving around, moving around. Right? Right. That's how these waves work. If you are 
sitting at your desk like a fool and you are cooking yourself with Wi-Fi or 5G. 5G, by the way, when you bring into your house proudly a little gizmo from Walmart and or Verizon sends it to you and it converts the 5G into Wi-Fi, that's what has to happen. And you'll just bathe yourself with Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So this that, is when you are in danger. If you sit there and you sleep in it, and just the way people are already doing. That's people right. are already doing this. So and, what if it's a light pole in front of your house and they install it right there and it's constantly in front of you, you know, it's in front of your window? All right, I'm going to tell you something. Now, I, this is a theory, but it is known that 5G is stopped or blocked by walls, by trees, and also by distance. It attenuates so quickly that they have to have repeaters. That's why you need one in your house. You need a repeater. Mm -hmm. So let's think about light. Remember that 5G is transmitted on light. So when you when there's a bright light shining outside your house, are you going to see it? No, because you have a wall in the way. What are trees doing? Trees block 5G. Why? Because they also block light. That's called shade. Right. So 5G is not as hardy as we think. It's easily blocked. And you can block it more easily than you can block the current RF that's coming. Well, that, that's <laughs> actually, you know, a little good news. People need good news because all the bad news is coming out about it. You know, there is about 200 scientists in European Union and 180 scientists in United States that are warning population and they are trying to delay the rollout of 5G because of health effects that it's going to have. So it is a good news that you are saying that we have little choice in it, like don't bring it in your house. Right? That's right. But you, at the same time, don't be such a dope that because it's faster, you're going to sign up for it. That's right, yes. Now, is it faster? I don't think so, is it? Well, yes, it is. It's, it's, this is the reason they're doing it, because it gives instant feedback. Is light Oh, you're right. You can download your movie in one se on a few seconds. That's right, that's right. But isn't, isn't the, when you do cables, right, in your house, if you change everything to cables, because we have recently done that, and we were amazed at improved speed of our internet. Right. Cable internet is the fastest. Wi-Fi is more erratic and slower. Sorry, Steve, you were going to say? No, that's just what I was going to say, is that the Cat5 cable, you know, I was trying to figure out the way to, uh, to get rid of the Wi-Fi completely in the house, and Cat5 was the only thing I could think of that would limit that the effects of uh, the Wi-Fi radiation that we're being bombarded with daily. But also, Sophia, you have told me when we had private talk about dirty electricity. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about that? Because even when they change to a cable, there is something called dirty electricity. Can you explain that a little better to us? Dirty electricity exists in everybody's house to some extent, and there are four factors that bring it in. And I can go into those, but we are almost at one hour now. But yeah, when you convert to Ethernet, if you use what's called STP, shielded twisted power cabling, and the common names for that are a five, Cat5 five and Cat6, then you are using a shielded form of cabling that's not even going to produce dirty electricity because one of the things that the uh, Internet over electric and that the cables do is they do create a stress or harmonics or noise or interference on the metal wires that normally don't carry those kinds of loads. So you need extra cables. And the kind that you're speaking of is exactly what you need to bring into your, into your own rooms. You need to hook up your computer to your Ethernet device, uh, the generation device for the signal with a Cat 5E or a Cat 6 cable. But this is all very technical. 
people have to get the basic concepts first, which is that you should not be using Wi-Fi, period. That's right. That's right. Well, as you said, Sophia, we are out of time, especially because we have soon um, former Congressman McKinney that is coming on with us. And we still have to kind of try to figure out those sound issues that we have and, and our Skype issues. But we have touched only on about, I don't even know, maybe one little drop from a whole bucket of information, you know, uh, of everything that you talk about. So I would like to ask you if you're willing to come more regularly on our show and we can talk about transhumanism ai where is the future going with all of this and about morgellon and chemtrails you're a really good researcher and you have really great information about chemtrails and i want to tell people about your website sophia you run a website www.aboutthesky.com you can find extremely good information on that website and you also have an online store www.avatarproducts.com and i can personally tell you that i have ordered several things from that website uh, one of the, one of them is a product called restore my husband has ibs issues so I'm so looking forward to get it because you talk also over there about glyphosate, how glyphosate can, can cause these uh, intestinal issues. Right, Sophia? Jana, yeah, this is a whole universe of information. And the chemtrail material is kind of my older chapter of life, but I've gotten into um, biology much more. That kind of set me in this direction. But I talk about photobiology now about bioelectricity and I make it very simple for people so yes my online store is avatarproducts.com I am really into iodine magnesium and this product restore I sell cell phone shielding cases there's so much you can get there it's kind of like a niche store and it, everything on it was either discovered by me to be profoundly helpful for me and friends and family and that's why I put it in the store or it's something I've created on my own or I've worked with a chemist to come up with it um, and everything is very inexpensive relatively speaking and the bang for the buck that you get is definitely worth it so that's how I stay alive avatar a-v-a-t-a-r products.com and I have a blog, Sophia Small Storm, Sophia with an F, dot com. And I, there are several years worth of posts that I've put up there. This is information that I've drawn from other sources that I think are profoundly interesting. Lots of videos, lots of articles. Um, if you, you can spend a lot of time lost on those various blog pages. There's one for every year. Yes, but yeah. There is very interesting information on it. And I want to talk about iodine just very briefly, really quickly to our listeners. You do have nascent iodine on it, on there. And I just recently purchased iodine, but my future purchase will be from you. Uh, iodine, we are almost all of us are deficient in iodine these days. And iodine detoxifies fluoride and bromine from our, from our bodies. Did you know that, Sophia? Well, sure, I know that, Yana, and that's why I take so much iodine. <laughs> yes, very you good. You have to be very cautious with iodine. I sell three different kinds of iodine. They're all inexpensive, and you can combine them, and I tell everyone, start with one. I have a whole ounce of nascent iodine for $20. That's the best deal on the Internet right now. And if you order stuff from us, you generally get something for free as well. So you can try something else, a little sample size. So, yeah, I would ask people if you want to start improving your mental um, mental attitude and your emotional being, you really have to begin with your own biology, with your own cells. And I would love to come back and... We can talk about this to the extent that I'm capable of explaining it. And this is all based on my own discovery and chatting with famous scientists, if I ever get the chance to. 
I'm in a dialogue with a very brilliant research scientist right now and I'm learning so much from her. And I write my newsletters. You can sign up for my newsletter. It's on my website. There's a little tab on the uh, sophiasmallstorm.com. You can read sample newsletters. But anyway, I don't want to take your time because I know you have Cynthia McKinney after me and yes. a big show. So I wish you good luck with that. Thank you so much, Sophia, for coming on. We are so glad you did that. And I just can't get enough of all of your information that I'm reading and then I'm listening to all of your interviews and presentations that you have done extremely important information and in depth and I'm so thankful that you came with us thank you and maybe next week again maybe at the same time I'm going to speak with Sophia uh, privately and be, be going to let you know uh, when we will have her on again it sounds excellent, and we do thank you so much, Sophia, for being with us here today. And, of course, I have to be quiet most of the time because, you know, it takes intelligent people to discuss this subject. That kind of leaves me out of the ballpark. So, you know, the <laughs> girls are the ones with the brains on this. Us guys are, well, you know, we just kept, kept in the closet. But uh, <laughs> yes. nonetheless, so it is in very important information. We do really appreciate you coming on with us here today on Israeli News Live and having the courage to come on Israeli, Israeli News, News Live. Live. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Sophia. You are welcome. It's my pleasure to be on Israeli News Live, let me tell you. <laughs> thank you so much. So we will hear from you soon. Thank you very much. And you all have a great evening. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.